Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be going over an interesting article which was released uh, yesterday uh, and it's surrounding certain things about Luz Ferrin in episode 8. So of course before I go into this uh, article I want to give you all kind of fair warning and to give you a chance to leave this video in case you do not want to have anything spoiled for this final episode this Friday. So with that being said, let us get right in. So as you can see, we're on the news articles page right now and it needs to be translated because it's in Swedish. So what I'm gonna do is gonna hit Google Translate and get this going. So Alexander Karim, I am the dragon in the wheel of time. Well, that much we have known for quite a while now. So, okay. <laughs> So this article states he has a crucial role, role in the big final. Uh, yeah, um, I've kind of speculated and we've all presumed that we're going to, at the bare minimum, get a flashback to Luz Ferrin during the Age of Legends. So let's see what this article has in store for us and what kind of new tidbits it gives us on this very subject. So, okay, blah, 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 it talks about what he's done. So then it goes, he plays a key role in the great fantasy series, The Wheel of Time, or The Tale of the Dragon's Return, as it's called in Swedish. Well, that kind of gives everything away, if that's what it's called in Swedish. <laughs> okay. In an exclusive interview with Film Top, which is this uh, publication site, he says the following, the series is called The Dragon's Return, and I am the dragon. So the original dragon, the one who comes later, is the main role. So obviously here he's talking about Rand, how he's the latest kind of reincarnation of the dragon reborn. But 3,000 years ago, I was there. And then I set the new world order in motion <laughs> by having boop, everything up. In the last episode, I show up when they show what happened. Okay, so... What we can straight away guess, uh, not guess, get from this article is we're going to see uh, Luz Ferrin back in his heyday in the Age of Legends. And not only that, we're going to see everything that transpired in those final moments of his life and which occurs in the uh, prologue of the Eye of the World. So we can very much expect to see everything that occurred in that prologue happened within the space of this episode. Uh, so this is going to be really interesting. I want to know how far in depth are they going to go in terms of how much they show us in terms of what Luz Ferrin did in that prologue. Are we going to see all the kind of mangled bodies of his children and his wife? Um, how kind of different is this kind of Age of Legends world that we've never seen brought to life before going to look on screen because I think as we all know if, if you've read the whole series and maybe just understand the Age of Legends in general we will see a vastly different world a much more technological world that we haven't really had any sort of look at you know prior to uh, this episode and so it's going to feel I would say quite out of place in the way things have looked uh, thus far in this series but of course that is fully to be expected so it's going to be really interesting to me and I'm sure for all of you out there when it comes to watching the episode just to see how much they showcase or they're able to showcase in terms of the different sort of landscape this kind of hugely and vastly technological world has in comparison to the age we're currently in. And I think it's going to be quite, how can I say, what's the word here? Quite, um, kind of if you want to call it a culture shock, especially in the whole series, thus far in terms of what everything looks like, how people operate, perhaps even the way they talk, because we are talking very much in a different time period with all the technologies, because, you know, there's flying hover cars, as they call them, I think, in the books off the top of my head, or at least in certain aspects. 
I think we're going to see a lot more use of, you know, Tang Real. But of course, this is all whether they show us a much wider viewpoint of the world or whether they're kind of going to just stick completely in the space loose Ferran is in in that prologue. This is going to be interesting anyway. I think we'll see aspects of kind of the technology that was used within his kind of... Um, where is it he's in? Is it his home? I can't remember off the top of my head. His home when uh, the prologue begins. So, all right, let's continue on with this. Okay, so where did I go? For in the last episode, I show up when they show what happened, and then I show up a little in the present. Okay, so not only are we going to get Luz Ferrin in the past, but we're going to get him in the present. Okay, wow, wow, wow. Huh. Now, I wonder how they're going to go about that. Is this kind of either an acceleration of the madness that we know will take Rand for the show and then Luz Ferrin comes out as a result of that and it's just a speeding up process or are they going to do something quite drastic and quite different to what we've kind of seen previous to this? Now that is the kind of big question here. So I think the most plausible thing which I've already just stated is they're going to have the madness in Rand be accelerated and we're going to get Luz Ferrin brought into present day. Kind of like how we saw with that f in the first episode with um, that young man who could channel, he had like the manifestation of his madness be shown to him and only him as an actual live person. And I think that is potentially what they might do with um, the character of Louis Ferrin. I think that's perhaps what they're getting at and alluding, well, what Alexander is alluding to when he says, I show up a little in the present. I think that could be something that happens or it could be while Rand is at the eye of the world and kind of in a battle with uh, Ishmael, he somehow gets glimpses of Luz Ferrin while he's in battle with him. Or maybe Luz Ferrin is there and he sees Luz Ferrin having a battle back in the past in the Age of Legends with Ishmael, Ishmael once again and he sees the weaves of what Luz Ferrin was doing and he then kind of takes the knowledge of what he's just seen and witnessed and then kind of brings it forward into present day and then uses these new weaves and his new abilities that he's learned as a way to kind of defeat him in the eye of the world. I think those are two quite plausible and understandable ways in which you can bring Luz Ferrin into the present and with it being in a, a little bit of a moment, I think that's something they might potentially do and it wouldn't be too far-fetched or a stretch from what we've seen in the books for it to kind of seem a bit crazy or stupid on the screen. I think it would be quite a nice addition to see that because as we know, unless I'm quite mistaken, while Rand is um, obviously battling other male channelers in the books, he picks up upon the weaves that they're using against him and then uses and learns them. And so I don't think it's that big of a stretch for that to kind of be showcased, but in a slightly different manner with it being during his battle with Ishmael at the Eye of the World and he sees glimpses of the battle Luz Ferrin had with him all the way back during the Age of Legends. I think that would be a really cool way to go about that introduction of how they're going to bring Luz Ferrin into the present. And maybe they'll do slightly two, they might use both of the ideas I put forward here and he will be present in the present day but also uh, Rand will get flashbacks to the Age of Legends. I think that would be pretty cool. Right, let us get on with the final bits of this article, because we're not done yet. Uh, Alexander Karim would make the role was far from obvious. So he states that he's not a fantasy person and did not really know what it was. So he said no a few times, okay. But they kept calling and in the end I said yes. It would be a few days in Prague, but due to a thingy magic, it was a month. The recording was crazy big. I think they put a billion on the first season. If you're a movie nerd like me, it's absolutely amazing. 
I asked if they had built the set for the entire recorder, but it was only for a single day. It's the worst thing I've seen in my whole life. It's Spielberg's size of this. All right, just to clear this up, because obviously reading that last bit will have you confused. I believe that is a Scandinavian thing. And I believe somewhere on this Reddit page, someone kind of understood and explained that to people that aren't Scandinavian. There we go. It just means that it's um, something unbelievable, like um, something out of this world. Kind of like how they put that much of uh, time and effort into that small scene and it created something so huge just for that moment. So that's really nice, just to give you all a complete understanding of what really was being said in that moment. Okay, well, that will be this video. So yeah, very small article, not a, le not a lot given, but a lot implied that we can kind of rummage through and kind of make our own kind of guesses and assumptions off of it. So yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you have, of course, please leave a like on it. And if you have any comments on the very topics we've discussed in this video, let me know in the comment section down below. Right, guys, thank you all for watching. I will catch you all tomorrow in another Wheeler Time video.